Who's my favorite head crab? You're my favorite head crab. I recently had a couple of questions on the channel about setting up triggers from scratch and whether headcrabs adhere to scripted schedules. I tackle both of those questions in this video and also demonstrate a rather complex set of paths and schedules for a headcrab to lead it through an obstacle course. If you find these tutorials helpful, you can support the channel by smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm or by subscribing if you haven't already. If you have questions or comments or there's a particular topic you want to see, feel free to let me know below. Thank you for watching. Start by loading any map you like. Here I'm using one of the maps out of the workshop examples. This example is nice because there's really not much going on. Next, take the block tool and create a square on the ground and then you can make it into a 3D block, like a rectangle. As big as you like, and the idea is you just want it big enough that you can easily walk your character through it. Now if you right click on that block, you can go to Object Properties, and in the Object Properties window is near the top, there's a text box that says Tie Selected Meshes to Entity. This is where you can set the class of that mesh that you just created. You can choose from a variety of classes and there's actually a few different trigger classes. Here I'm just gonna pick a simple trigger once class. Give the trigger a name because we're gonna have to reference the name of the entity later when we're telling it what to trigger. So here this is gonna be Lamar Trigger. When you actually build the map, you're not gonna see the trigger anymore when you're in game, but it's still there. So as soon as your character walks through that area that's covered by that entity, you're gonna trigger whatever actions are set up by that trigger. Let's drop in an armored headcrab NPC and that's one of my favorite NPCs in the game. And I'll quickly set up the AI relationship just to make sure that the headcrab doesn't attack the player when we start the map. I have other videos covering AI relationships, so let's skip through this pretty quick. Just don't forget to set that relationship as active because if you don't check that box, then you're going to be disappointed when the headcrab attacks you as soon as the map loads. Now I want some activity to trigger, so I'm going to set up four path corners that are going to cause the NPC to walk around in a circle basically. Path corners you can just drop on the ground and then you set the names of the path corners and every path corner could have a next path corner. I also have a video about how to do pathing, so I'm just going to set this up quick so we have some path to route the NPC around when we trigger the event. Once I've named each of the path corners, I'm going back over each path corner and setting its next stop target so that it follows the path. And I'm making it repeatable so we can go around the circle over and over again, going from path one to two to three to four. You can sort of tell if you've made a mistake by looking at all of the lines between the path corners. Just make sure that they're all connected and you can see that it's going in the direction you'd like it to go. In order to tell the NPC to walk those paths, I'm gonna make an AI scripted schedule. And the AI scripted schedule is what the trigger is going to trigger. For the AI scripted schedule, you just set the first path point. And as soon as the NPC gets that first path point, they're gonna to go to the next path point as instructed by the last path point, or last path corner, I should say. You have to make sure you set the target NPC to your NPC so that the game knows which NPC to tell to follow the path. I'm also gonna give the AI scripted schedule name, Lamar Loop Path, and that's how the trigger is gonna to refer to the AI scripted schedule. Now, don't forget to change this from walk to goal to walk goal path. If you just set it to walk to goal, then the NPC is gonna to walk to that first path corner and stop. If you set it to walk goal path, then it's gonna continue along the path. 
Now you open up your trigger, go to the output, and we're gonna set up an output so that when the character goes through this trigger, it's going to cause an output on another entity. On trigger, which means when the character walks through the box, walks through the entity, it's going to look at the AI scripted schedule, and I'm just gonna to have to find it here. There we go, the Lamar loop path and it's going to trigger start schedule on that AI scripted schedule. So the on trigger is telling Lamar loop path, the AI scripted schedule, to start its schedule. And this is the basics of how you can set up triggers. A lot of the interaction between entities are set up with these outputs and inputs. So here we go, my character has walked past the trigger, and you can see the head crab, Lamar, starts to walk. I'm just gonna speed him up a bit because he's a bit slow. And he'll continue to walk around that in circles. So I verified that the trigger is now working. The next question I had was whether I could set a head crab to follow a scripted schedule. So let's get rid of these path points and drop in a scripted schedule. When you drop in the scripted schedule, the direction that the scripted schedule object is tapered is the direction that the NPC is gonna to point to when the scripted schedule starts. So I'm just gonna face it towards a trigger so I can turn around and I'll see Lamar right away after I turn around. Now inside the properties here, we're gonna give it a name because we have to be able to refer to the entity. So we're gonna call this the Lamar script. The target NPC for the scripted schedule is gonna be Lamar. And now I can go through and pick the pre-action idle animation, the entry animation, the action animation, and the post-action idle animation. I also have a video specifically about scripted sequences and you can go watch that, but as a quick executive summary, you can set up to three different actions here in a scripted schedule. You can also have a looped schedule after it's done where the NPC will just continue to do some action after it's done its entry animation and its action animation. And I'm not really familiar with all the head grab animations here, so I'm just gonna scroll through and grab a few. I think if I get him to do something obvious like burrow into the ground, burrow out of the ground, and then maybe do a flip. So it'll be really obvious when I see those three actions happen. There are a lot of different options to set in these scripted schedules. I usually like to take a look around and kind of play with different options. Here I'm gonna make them run to the spot. You can decide whether the NPC moves to the location of the script schedule or not, and here I'm gonna ask him to run to that location. Also, when I'm running these tests, I usually set it to no interruptions just to make sure that the test runs smoothly. If you were actually doing this in a map, you'd have to decide if you wanted interruptions to happen or not. Now here we are back in the trigger properties, and if you go to outputs, instead of sending an output to the AI scripted schedule, we're going to change this target to the new script, so the Lamar script. And instead of the start schedule, we have to find the begin sequence. Begin sequence is the signal that you're going to send the scripted sequence to start. So now this trigger is gonna start the scripted sequence for the head crab. If everything works right, the head crab is going to walk towards that scripted sequence as soon as the NPC passes through the trigger. Okay, so let's see if the scripted sequence is gonna work. I'm gonna go past the trigger and we'll watch Lamar walk towards that area and hopefully do the animations. Okay, come on, Lamar. Let's see you burrow in, burrow out. There's the burrow in, there's the burrow out, and there's the backflip. Perfect. That's it. That's a good head crab. Now you can get pretty complicated with these things and chain together a bunch of paths and scripted sequences to get a head crab, for example, to do an obstacle course, which is what I'm gonna show you right now. Okay, buddy, just like we practiced, we're gonna go through this obstacle course and you are gonna be a champion. Are you ready to go? All right, come on, get to the starting point. All right, you got this. 
Easy peasy, let's see a big roar. Come on, get pumped. Yes, yes, go. All right, up the top, up the top, and big cheer. Now keep going, quick, 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 through, 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 through. Come on, make some time, make some good time. Through the first, through the second, through the third. All right now, up and over. Yeah, keep balance, don't fall over. Fast, 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 fast. And now down the stairs and over the table. Cut. Okay, fine, go around the table. Lazy head crab. All right, now I want you to go through that tunnel. Don't be scared, it's okay, you can get through that. Where are you going, come on, come on, get back up, back up, through the tunnel. There you go, buddy, good job. Now meet me on the other side. Come here, come here, come here, good job. Way to go, head crab. Who's, oh, there's a good flip. Who's my favorite head crab? Oh, it's a good boy. Okay, take a nap. Good boy, you deserve it.